couple of minutes after five, so we'll get started. I'm going to welcome everyone back for our evening worship service. It's good to see everyone. If y'all will, give me your attention. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Bible study. 10.30 is our worship. 5 p.m. is our evening worship. Wednesday at 6. It's our midweek Bible study, so keep those in mind. Our prayer request list, uh, Judy Green will be going to Birmingham Tuesday for MRI, an appointment with oncologist to follow. Gary has his PET scan on, on June the 3rd, so keep him in, in your prayers. Uh, Elaine and her family, Luane Goodwin, Mickey Enoch, Linda York family, Chris King, Bobby Rupel, Robert and Sybil Darcy, Lori Patterson, Susan Minton, Ruth Mayhaw, Kaylee Brock, Margaret and Erin Collins, Gary Anderson, Caden McGee and family, Jane Williamson, Donnie West, Maddie's friend Lindsay, Jessica Reinhardt, Jean Barfield, Mary Jo McCurdy, Esther Thrasher, Chad Latta, Kenyon McGee, Jim Bone, Donald and Laverne Beaver, Rodney Pollard, Lori Williams, Friedel LeMaster, Leroy Hamby, D. Cyril, uh, the daughter of Clay Jacobs, Jan Brown, Re Regina Bradley, and Craig Boos. Um, they put him back on some of his medicine today and said uh, they were turning him over to the good Lord, that there was nothing really they could do for him. So it's up to God at this point. So we'll pray hard for Rita and that family. Uh, we have our cards up front for anyone that wants to come up and sign them. We have the Borden Springs singing on the 24th at 6.30. The Collinsville 38th Annual Gospel Singing is June 21st at 7 o'clock. Refreshments at 9 at the Collinsville Congregation. They're also having a gospel meeting on June 23rd through 26th. So keep that in mind. Uh, it doesn't really say what time other than their regular service times is all that's on here. Keep those in mind. Uh, we also have the little graduation party tonight after the service, so everyone's welcome to stay for that. For uh, Ryan's little, I think he's the only one graduating, so welcome to stay for that if you will. Uh, participating tonight, Gary Anderson's leading the singing. Gary Bragg's going to do our prayer. Ian, the scripture, and Lewayne, the closing prayer. So with that, we'll turn it over to Gary Anderson. <laughs> 919, 919, verses 1 and 4. I'm just a weary pilgrim Wandering through this world of sin Getting ready for that sea When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in When the saints go marching in Verses 
Cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fails. For my enemies speak against me, and those who lie in wait for my life take counsel together, saying, God has forsaken him. Pursue and take him, for there is none to deliver him. O God, do not be far from me. O my God, make haste to help me. Let them be confounded and consumed who are adversaries of my life. Let them be covered with reproach and dishonor who seek my hurt. Long before Gary teaches us a lesson for the night, will be number 235. 235, we'll sing all three verses, and if you like, you may stand. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where the cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was a blood of fire. Glory to His name, glory to His name, glory to
Well, it's a quality group of people. Thank you so much for being here. I don't know if I'm preaching too hard or if I'm not preaching enough or what to get people to come back. But anyway, I'm so thankful that you're here. We're going to answer a very important question tonight in our study. And this is one of those informal type studies where actually if you want to ask a question or make a comment to me, you can. As we do this, sort of similar to a Bible study. A young person says, Mr. Gary, why do I have to be baptized? Why is it that I have to be baptized? Now, I think most all of our people could probably, I hope you can, answer that question. Why do you have to be baptized? Anybody want to tell me? Why? That's what the scripture says, and it's also to wash away the sins. Okay, it's what the scripture says, and what? Did somebody say, some, one of y'all say something? Nick, did you say something? Just, uh, what the scripture says, it holds on for sin. Okay. It is one of the things we must do. We must do. Now, there's a lot, I will tell y'all, and, and I want all of our young people to recognize this too. Not everybody in the religious world today believes that you have to be baptized. In fact, there's not a lot of, a lot of people that actually believes that you have to be baptized. It's all been washed under the rug so to speak, uh, about baptism. And why do you have to be baptized? Now, we've studied the Bible. We've studied all of the 39 books of the Old Testament. We've studied the 27 books of the New Testament. And in looking at some of the things that the Bible teaches about why do I have to be baptized? We've got, we got some young people that's, that needs to know the answer to that question. They say, well, you know, I've been saved, but I've never been baptized. There's a question there, you know. I mean... People think in their mind that this is, you accept Christ into your life, you acknowledge Christ by believing in him, and, and that's all you have to do in order to be saved. But that's not what the Bible teaches. And I want all of our young people, and especially our older ones, to be able to, to talk to somebody if they come to you with that all-important question. Why is it that you people believe that we have to be baptized in order to be saved? Well, we're going to answer some of those questions. In the Bible, in Matthew 28, verse number 19, there's a commandment being given by the Lord Jesus to those apostles. He's going to all the world and preach the gospel. Teach them and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, first of all, you'll recognize the fact that he's saying, you go into all the world, don't teach this group over here that you have to be baptized, but teach this group over here. That's not what he said. He said, you go into all the world and you teach these people. What are they going to be taught? To be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. We know that the Father is God. We know that the Son is Christ. And we know that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. We know that that makes up the three in the Godhead. Understandable. Now, if, if this was so all important that even the Lord himself had told them to go into all the world and teach these people, and in teaching them, you teach them this principle. The principle is that you be baptized for the remission of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That seems logical, but that's what Jesus said to do. Now, we go a little further. We ask another question. When you talk about believing, is it just believing in God? Is that all in the world that, that matters? We have to believe in God, but what else do we have to believe? Anybody got any ideas about that? What else do we have to believe? We have to believe in God, yes, but what are the things that we are trying our best to learn to believe? What are they? Anybody got any thoughts? You ever thought about this old book? You ever thought about the 39 books of the old and the 27 books of the new, and you thought about those two covenants that we have? And, and, and what are we trying to believe in this? We're trying to believe if whether or not this is God's will. First of all, we believe it is God's will. Secondly, where do I fit in in this? Where do you fit in in this? Are you in the Old Testament or are you in the New? you in the New. That's right, Nick. Now, in all honesty, when he says, you must believe, you must believe. Well, what in the world are we going to be? He said, you believe and be baptized. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. 
You know what the word and means? Any of you, any of you professors in our group tonight, young people and all, you know what the word and actually means? It's in addition to. It's a continuation. That's right. Now, if you're going to believe, what are you trying to believe? You're trying to believe the things that's in this book. Well, if I believe the words in this book, the book says, he that believeth, and in addition to, going further, carrying it on, to be baptized for the remission of sins. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. So we have to believe and we have to follow the commandments because we're believing these commandments are true, right? That's what we're trying to do. Well, now, young people, if somewhere along the way your, your friends or your neighbors, they may come to you and say, you know, last night I was saved. Or they may say, you know, I've been saved. And then you may ask a question, well, will you baptize? Well, no, I'll do that later on. Okay? Well, why do you think you need to be baptized? A lot of people can't answer that question. They have no idea. Now, in John chapter 3, verse number 5, and I want you to think about this. He said, except. Now, you know what except means? That means <laughs> unless you do this. Except you close that door out there, the wind may blow in here on you, or except you close that door, if it's raining, it may rain in here on you. But except means that you, that's the concept of moving forward. Now, the Bible says, except a man be born of water. Now, how in the world are we going to be born of water? I think all of our young people are old enough and recognize the fact that Whenever a child is to be born, the mother carries that child inside her body. Okay? That's God's method of how this works. The seed of man, the seed of woman. And that baby grows within that mama, and that mama carries that little thing in her, in her body until it's born. And now, we know what birth actually means, little animals. You know, the other day, you know, up, up there where Vicky and I live, we look out in the yard, and there's a lot of little rabbits out there in the yard, you know. And rabbits... You know, sometimes they have lots of little babies, you know. And they carry those little rabbits within their body until their time for them to be born. Now, same way with children. Now, let's look at the thought. Say, what's that got to do with baptism? Well, the Bible says, except a man be born of water. Into the water, out of the water. Is water, they say, well, you know, I, I just, I, that's symbolism, Gary. You know, people say that a lot. They say that's symbolism. I, that's just a symbol. Oh, no. It's actually a commandment. Now, look at this. Except, that means unless you do this, the opposite's going to happen. Now, think about it this way. Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he can't go to heaven. He cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. He cannot go there. Now, there's a lot of people that says, I don't believe you have to be baptized. Well, let me ask you a question. If you don't believe you have to be baptized, you must not. You must believe that, you know, you don't want to go to heaven. Because the only way I know that you're going to ever go to heaven is except you be born of water and of the Spirit, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. I know that's the only way the Bible teaches that you can go to heaven. Now, this is being recorded, and there's a lot of people that hates me for saying that tonight, if they're watching this. But all in all honesty, think about this. He says there's an exception here. If you're not born of water, you're not put in the water, come up out of the water, be born out of the water. He said, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. So how important is that to our salvation? To go to heaven, we have to be born of water, you know, and of the Spirit. Now, you know, a lot of times people say, well, you know, I know y'all teach that, but, you know, I know when I was saved, I felt it. <laughs> You know, and I'm not being ugly about this. I felt it. I've had things before that scared me half slapped to death, you know. Uh, maybe you get close to having a terrible accident, and, and then once you realize how close you came to having a terrible accident, you know what you do? You begin to get real shaky and scared, right? Okay, now that kind of gets your attention. Well, now, when we talk about this, a lot of times people haven't understood the principle of baptism and how it should cause us to think in terms of 
We don't want to be scared when the Lord comes back. We don't want to be scared when the Lord decides to end all this, and one day he will. Hopefully it'll be a long time from here, but if it's not, then are we going to be ready? The Bible even teaches us that, you know, not even the, the Lord himself, only God knows when that's going to occur. Not even the angels in heaven, they don't know when it's going to happen. But one of these days, the old earth will cease to exist. It will all be burned up according to the scripture. If we believe the Bible, that's the way it's going to be. Now, what's that got to do with baptism? Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's telling me I've got to be baptized to go to heaven. I've got to know what it's about. I've got to know how to do it. I've got to get involved in it, and I've got to do that if I want to go to heaven. There's the exception. If I don't want to do it, I don't have to, but I don't have to go to heaven either because that's the exception. You see? Now, let's look a little further. Jesus died. Everybody in this room knows he died on the cross, right? He shed his blood. He was crucified. They drove the nails through his hands and his feet, put a crown of thorns on his head, pierced his old side, you know, and, and killed the Son of God. What a sad, sad thing to think about. There he is you know, hanging between heaven and earth, dead on the cross. Why did he do that? He did that so that we could have the forgiveness of our sins. But the only way that that's go, uh, ever going to give us the forgiveness of sins is if we ourselves commit ourselves to what the Bible teaches in order to receive that salvation that Jesus died for. Now, what is that? Baptism in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38 Peter's preaching to those people. He said, you've taken him by wicked hands. You killed the Son of God. They said, well, what in the world do we need to do about it? We didn't know he was the Son of God. We killed him, but we didn't. He said, well, look, you repent. You know what repentance is? What did we say repentance was this morning, fellas? Okay. It's actually becoming, this is turning away, like Ian said, but it's actually becoming sorrowful for something you've done. Anybody ever done something and you're sorry you did it? You know, might have kicked an old dog sometime, you know, and he didn't need kicking, but you kicked him. And you're sorry you kicked him after you kicked him because he didn't bite you. You see, the thing about it is for us today, in Acts 2.38, Peter told these people after they had decided, we've done something really terrible here. We've killed the Son of God. Well, what do we need to do about it? He said, you repent. You become sorrowful. Repent and what? Be baptized for the remission of your sins. Now, is baptism, baptism essential unto salvation? What about these people? What if they never did it? What if they decided, I'm not going to be baptized. I know the Lord died on the cross, and I'm sorry we killed him, but I'm not going to be baptized. Not going to work, is it? He says to these people, you repent. You become sorrowful that you did what you did. You can get over that. You can get the forgiveness for that, but you're going to have to be baptized. You know. Now, in order for us to understand the principle of what we're talking about here, these people, approximately 3,000 that day, of all these thousands that was there, they decided we, we don't want this on our, we don't want to be guilty of this. We want, to, we want this reconciled. You know what that means, reconcile. That's not a big word. I'm not real smart. But reconcile means I want to make it right. I did wrong and I want to make it right. So I want to reconcile this. That's what that means. So, when you're talking to young people, you need to explain these things. So reconcile means I want to make it right. I don't want that on me that I killed the Son of God. So I'm going to reconcile this. Well, how do you do that? You're going to have to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Put in the water, born of water and of the Spirit, come up out of the water. Pretty easy to understand. But we have educated people today that teach the opposite of exactly what I'm talking to you about today. The Bible teaches exactly what I'm talking to you about. You can look at... And see, because I'm giving you book, chapter, and verse. Now, let's look at something else. I have a question about baptism. Okay. A question about this verse, about verse 41. Okay. Peter's preaching the first gospel sermon. Right. And, you know, they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. The 3,000 souls was added, who is, who is them in this case? It was those that was already had already Christians. You know, it was those that had already understood. This, this, is, the, this is the time whenever the, the church had already been established. You know, 
the church was being established here from the standpoint this is this is the first reconciliation we have of what's happened. There was already those, just like the apostles. You, you think about this. Who's doing the preaching here? Peter is. Well, he's one of the apostles. You know he's already did everything that he's supposed to do along with the others, and he's preaching it. He says they were added unto them. Who was them? It was those, the apostles and those that were saved. That's who he's talking about. See, the church itself has is being formally established. But see, these apostles had already been with the Lord. They had already been baptized for the remission of their sins. They already knew the principle of what he's talking about. So added to them is those that were there already that was Christians, which was like Peter. He was already a Christian. He was preaching the first gospel, actually first gospel sermon to promote to be added to them. Good question. All right, let's go a little further. <clears throat> If you think about it, in Acts chapter 10, verse 48, you know, we stress how important it is about a name. Everybody like their name? If you don't like your name, don't speak up. But if you like your name, <laughs> you know, I once knew a boy, honestly, when I was in school, his mom and daddy named him Mavis. Now, that sounds crazy, but it's true. I was in the third grade. I never will forget that. For some reason or another, his mom and daddy named him Mavis. I always thought Mavis is a girl's name. And then he, one day he told me, Mavis told me, he says, that was my uncle's name. They named me after my uncle. Well, somewhere along the way, they got messed up on what really and truly names ought to mean. What is the, the importance of a name? Well, we go back to our, our thoughts tonight. Now, Mavis, he was a good fellow. He, he grew up and and, and I don't know whatever happened to him, but he, he was named after his uncle. His uncle was Uncle Mavis. And, you know, we would think that needs to be Aunt Mavis instead of Uncle Mavis, but Mavis was his name. I've had other guys that had names that were similar to, uh, you ever heard of a boy named Leslie? Steve. Leslie. <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you think about names. Well, how important is a name? Think about it, young people. We're talking about being baptized. He said, you're going to have to be baptized in the name of the Lord. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord in Acts chapter 10, verse 48. You have to be baptized in the name of the Lord. That's the authorization of baptism, okay? That's important to our, to our thoughts tonight. Who commanded and who authorized? The Lord himself. And he said, you be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, if you've ever witnessed a baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, now and forever. Now, what does now and forever mean? You can have the remission of your sins forever if you complete the plan of salvation and you keep the plan of salvation. Now, you may fall off the wagon, but you can go back. Now, we can understand the principle here. He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, in Acts 19 and verse 5, we find the example of this. He says, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You go over to Acts 19, 5. He says, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name, in the name of the Lord Jesus. So there's the name that he's talking about, the Lord Jesus. He was baptized in the name of Christ. Now, I don't know of anything that can make you closer to that of Jesus than being baptized in his name. You become an heir to the throne of God, right? You become an heir to, the, the, to where heaven is. You become an heir. You're, you're part of the family. And you, just like for us that, that have children, my son Matthew, he's an heir to me, from me. Uh, he, whatever I have, he will have someday. You know, those things are important. Now, what did Jesus have? Jesus had the plan of salvation and the way to go to heaven. And so baptism brought that home. He said, you're baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. You're baptized in his name. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Acts twenty two sixteen. real quick, y'all. We're not going to go a long time tonight, but I want you to think about this. Baptism is a method of the exit of sin. How do you get rid of your sins? I want you to think about that. 
A lot of people say, well, I prayed the sinner's prayer. Okay, now, this is being recorded. I'm going to have a lot of people that's going to get mad as fire about what I'm about to tell you. Did you know that the Bible says that God heareth not the prayer of the sinner? Did y'all know that? Okay. From the standpoint of praying the sinner's prayer, you know what hinders our prayers more than anything in this world? Does anybody know what that is? Sin. Okay. Now, if you tell somebody something like that, they're going to be awful upset and hurt at you. Because everybody, he said, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Well, how do we prevent how do we prevent that sin from hindering our prayers? Now, let's go back to the thought. They say, well, what's that got to do with baptism? I'll tell you what it has to do with it. Think about it for a moment. The method of the exit of sin. And now he says to these people in Acts 22 and 16, he said, you why tarest thou? You arise, and you be baptized, and you wash away your sins. Now, what happened when you were baptized? Washed away your sin. Does that take away the hindrance? Sure it does. Sure it does. See, you once had the sin. You don't have it no more. You had it washed away. It takes it away. It's an exit strategy. So what are we doing here? He says, you arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. You call on the name of the Lord then. And the Bible says the precious blood of Jesus Christ doth now cleanse us from all sin. We come in contact with the blood of Christ through the watery grave of baptism. Now, how important is all of this? You know, I've had people say, well, you know, I was baptized, but I didn't understand it. That's the purpose of what I'm doing tonight. Try to help our young people understand baptism. You have to be baptized in order to go to heaven. But you have to be baptized to get rid of your sins in order for you to Call on the name of the Lord and talk to God and let God answer your prayers. You've got to be baptized. Cleanse your sins. Move your sins to the side. Exit strategy is what we're talking about. Let's go to another one real quick. Romans 6, verse 3. Now, the Bible says here, Know ye not that so many of us have been baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. But we were raised to walk into the newness of life. Now, baptism is a symbol of death and life. Now, a lot of people don't understand that. Well, how is it a symbol of death? Well, let me tell you. If I took you and put you in that baptistry up there tonight, and I pushed you under that water, and Nick, I didn't let you up, and I just kept you down under that water, what would eventually happen? You'd die, wouldn't you? He'd drown. But what if I put you under that water and I raised you right back up? You're back into life, right? You went from being in a position of death into a position of life. Well, what's the, what's the big deal about that? Well, we're talking about baptism. It puts you into a position of death, brings you back into a position of life. But you see, the Bible says it's newness of life. What, what is the new aspect of your life? Once I started and I put you under that water, well, I raised you up, and you, you're, in the, you're in the newness of life. What's new about your life? No sin. That's right. No sin. Is that not, I mean, to me, I mean, it's pretty easy to see and pretty easy to understand, but we're one of the few Religious organizations, and I just say organization because it, that's the way people categorize us. We're one of the few that believe in the seriousness and the necessity of baptism. It has to be. It can't be no other way. They say, well, you know, I, I want to be saved, but I don't know much about the baptism. You see, you can talk to people till you're blue in the face. They say, well, I don't know so much about baptism. Now, I, I, know, I know how I feel in my heart. Well, let me show, share you with something here. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 5. Y'all remember what the book of Ephesians is, is actually, we point at it for, for it's the book of what? Look at my finger. It's the book of ones. Why would I say that? Because the Bible said in Ephesians 4 and 5, he says, first of all, there's just one Lord, right? 
He said there's one faith, right? And then he says there's one baptism. Now, today in our society, there's people out there that says, you know, uh, there's some that believe in what they call holy water. You know, put your dip your fingers in it and touch your head with it. And then some believe in other aspects of it that maybe, you know, uh, I can take in a cup and pour it on my head. But you see, we're talking about death and life. You remember what I told you about that? place where you can be into a, a situation like death, raised to walk in life. But here's, here's something very important to what we're talking about. He says there's just one baptism. One baptism. There's one way of doing it. There's one method of doing it. There's one baptism that does what it's supposed to do, cleanse you from your sin. There's one baptism that puts you into a death situation, raise you to a life situation. Just one. One kind. Can't be all this other stuff that people talk about. Now, you could look at every example in the Bible. You'd never find one where anybody did any such thing as pouring water on their head or anything like that. In fact, if you go back and you start reading, you might find the Ethiopian eunuch. He's coming back. He's riding in his wagon. You know there's a man there with him. You know Philip is with him, and he says, see, see, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? What the Bible says, they got down out of the chariot, which is a transportation mode they had, went down into the water, and he baptized him. He could have very easily said they stopped at a water, a mud hole over there, and he got out with a cup, and he baptized him. But that ain't what he said. You see... Baptism is so important. That's the reason I want to teach it in such a way that our young people can understand. I want every single one of you, when you grow up, you learn the, you learn the rights and wrongs, the do's and the don'ts. I want you to be baptized for the remission of your sins. That's important. That's the only way you can ever get into heaven. Now, baptism is a burial. We'll study that just briefly here, and then we'll close out. In Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 12, do you all know what we do when we bury somebody? You know what we do? We dig a big hole, and we put the entire body into that hole, and then we cover them over. And the body goes back to the clay, or back, back to the dirt. That's what our body's made out of. It's made out of clay. It's made out of dirt, you know. But it goes back. It deteriorates, and it goes back to the dust of the earth. The spirit, the soul, that dwells within the living part of us. It goes back to God which gave it. Now, understand, this is important. Baptism is essential, but it's also a burial. Being that, as we just mentioned earlier, the Bible says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you're risen with him through the faith and the operation of God. He said, who hath raised him from the dead. Now, if I'm going to be buried in baptism, that means I'm going to be fully submerged, buried underneath put under. I'm going to be raised to walk in newness of life. It's the faith, the operation of God. Well, is baptism an operation? Why, sure. It's a method of taking care of the sins of the people, to wash the sins away, but to bury them in baptism, to put them under the water, to wash away their sins and raise to walk in newness of life. I think about some of the things that I've heard over the course of time that people think about baptism. Recently, a, a person said, I don't believe you have to be baptized. So why not? Because I know what I feel in my heart. I know I'm saved. Well, there's a problem with that. I always have problems with that. But anyway... In 1 Peter 3, 21, the Bible said, The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us. Does baptism actually have the ability to save you? Yes. How does it save you? It washes your sins away. Now, does it mean you won't ever sin again? No. Does it mean you won't ever have to be baptized again? Yes you come in contact with the blood of Christ in the watery grave of baptism. And so, without a doubt, 
you are in a situation where the Bible says baptism doth also now save us. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God. What's this good conscience about? What, what does it mean, a good conscience toward God? Did God say do it? He did. If I do it, I know I've done what God said do, right? If I don't do it, I can have a problem. My conscience ought to bother me. I didn't do what God said do. I don't believe you have to be baptized in order to be saved. But your conscience has got you in a situation where you're going to lose your soul. Now, a lot of people, they don't see it that way. There's a host of people, a lot more people than you might realize, don't understand the principle of baptism, don't understand why that you have to do that, why every Sunday we extend the invitation. I was asked that question just this morning. You know, not that we, the question was not that we extend the invitation. They said, you know, I'm glad that you all extend the invitation each and every time that you have a service. I'm glad too. Because you know what that is? That's an opportunity to do what God said do if they've never done what God said do. The invitation is you're invited to participate in the understanding of baptism and how it works and what it's for and to know that there's no way to go to heaven without it. You've got to get rid of your sins some way or another. Will they come back? Yes. But the baptism... And the operation of baptism puts you in a contact with the blood of Christ, which gives you the sustaining ability to have the forgiveness of your sins if you repent. Everybody understand y'all looking at me like. But I'm serious with you. This is a question that a lot of times, you know, we're studying on Bible basics on Sunday night. This is a very basic question that people have. Why do I have to be baptized? So you can go to heaven. That's the best answer I could give you. So you can go to heaven. You mean to tell me you don't think anybody can go to heaven that hasn't been baptized? No, I don't. You know why? Because God's word expressed the, the very idea that unless you are baptized for the mission of your sins, you can't enter into the kingdom of heaven. Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. So every single one of our young people as they grow up and as they become the age of accountability, now let me tell you this before we quit. Well, I know a lot, of, a lot of our young people may not understand this. If you're a young person and you don't understand the principles of this and you're not capable because you haven't reached the age of accountability and something happens to you, you will go to heaven. Little babies go to heaven. I shared that with you this morning. Their little faces do behold the face of God each and every day so if there's a little child that something happens to, unfortunately, that little child will go to heaven even though they haven't been baptized. They didn't ever reach the age of accountability, of understanding the principles of what I've talked to you about tonight. But if they have reached that point and they're able to understand all these little principles that we're talking about, these things that are put forth from God's word, they must be baptized in order to go to heaven. You know, that's important. Now, a lot of times people say, well, they're too young to be baptized. And then sometimes people are baptized when they're younger. And then they, later on, when they fully understand the principle and the operation of baptism, they come back and say, I want to be baptized again because I didn't fully understand the purpose of my baptism in the beginning. You know, I've, there have been a lot of people, people that I've loved and appreciated for years, that I baptized them again. Because when they were baptized, they were young and didn't understand the principle, never knew what it really was about. But tonight we've studied the importance of baptism. I'm going to close out right there. Is there any thoughts, comments, or questions? Anybody got any thoughts? Yes, sir? Well, you have to you have to know and understand the, why why you're doing it, and that's why I, I did it the way I did it tonight. So that we, as young people, you know, some people may or may not understand this, and you have to get it down to the level of where each person can understand the principle of that. 
You know, sometimes people may think they're saved when they're really not, not knowing and understanding the principle of baptism. Okay, that's all I have for you tonight. And so we're going to extend the invitation of the gospel. I'm going to get this little ball that goes on this microphone. I'm going to stick it back on there. I'm going to quit knocking it off. We're going to stand, and Gary's going to lead us in song, and that's an invitation. If there's somebody that needs to be and wants to be, then we can do that. Verse 1 and 4. Why do you wait, dear brother? Oh, why do you tarry so long? Your Savior is waiting to give you 